All right, guys, here's a quick 12600K overclocking guide on the Z690 motherboard to 5.2 gigahertz single threaded applications and 5 gigahertz load on P cores and just 4 gigahertz on E cores. Check it out. Okay, let's do a quick overclocking guide. I'm using an ASUS Z690 board, but this should apply on any manufacturer. And I'm using a, uh, an Intel Core i5-12600K. So we've done a 12900K, now we're gonna do a 12600K, similar method as before. Uh, and you should watch my initial video about overclocking. It's a little bit longer, but this one will be short. So enable XMP in ASUS BIOS, it could also be uh, enhanced memory profile. This will set everything from memory frequency it normally locks in the b clock the pci express frequency uh, gives you the voltages and also enables memory timing so there's a lot of uh, stuff that it does so you don't have to worry about it the thing i did though is i removed all limits to just uh, we have a, a reliable um, clock in windows when we're overclocking and then I've changed performance and efficiency cores. So in performance cores, I've gone by core usage and uh, the first two cores are going to uh, speed up to about 5.2 gigahertz, up to four cores, 5.1 gigahertz, and all cores, five, or, you know, six, six cores will run at five gigahertz under load. The E cores will run at four gigahertz under load. Uh, I've left uh, the, uh, I should mention this, I've uh, left CPU load line calibration at five, level five, okay? Um, and uh, the other thing that I've done is other than setting 40 case ratio, which I probably should play with this more, uh, uh, there's probably more headroom there. Uh, the other thing that I have done is I've set the manual mode voltage of eco at 1.34 now under load this is about 1.24 volts at 5 gigahertz right when when we have a multi-threaded benchmark so it will idle at a higher voltage maybe 1.3 or so uh, so when you're you know at 5.2 gigahertz the cpu needs a little bit more voltage so uh, load line level 5 seems to be quite a good mix everything else is already there it's already been said i haven't changed it so that's it this is the overclock let's go to windows and we'll just i'll just show you the frequencies that are being set i'll just do a quick r23 so you can see where we're at um oh um this is running real time so this is going to render in you know in the background or it's rendering it's just not showing the scene um Interesting fact, I've been looking at results on HW bot, a 10900K at 6 gigahertz finished this benchmark uh, at 19,500 points roughly. And at, at 5 gigahertz, the best run that I've seen, and obviously this benchmark is not 100% accurate, but the best run I've seen was about 19.2 from memory. 192.2k but it also varies it could be high 18k as well so but anyway the fact that a 5 gigahertz 12600k core i5 is almost matching a 6 gigahertz 10900k in multi-threaded loads tells you all you need to know how powerful this little cpu is you know absolutely incredible while we're at it, I'll just run a couple of sensors. Um, maybe run um, R20 since it's in normal mode. And uh, let's just do CPU Z as well. I want to show you how the cores are fluctuating based on the settings that we've put in BIOS. So I'll just lower this down so you can see if I right click on it, you'll see the cores are fluctuating. The core four and five were set to for 5.2 gigahertz. And you'll see that these two cores are the only ones that are getting the 5.2 gigahertz boost. All the cores will get 5.1 gigahertz boost. So most of the time, 
you'll basically be running at about 5.1, between 5.1 and 5.2. As you go on the load, which I'm going to show you now, you're going to end up uh, at 5 gigahertz on all cores, right? See, the load voltage is about 1.24. I've checked this with digital multimeter, it's correct. Um, the load temperature around mid 70s um, is what you can expect. So pretty good. I think this was about 170 or something watts, if I remember correctly and whatnot. So um, I, I, I reckon with a, you know, five gigahertz all core and up to 5.2 gigahertz single threaded, this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm very happy with this overclock. I reckon this is going to be a killer little PC and the fact that it's so fast even against the 10900k uh, that's pretty pretty cool to me i uh, i i love that um so yeah great value chip uh, super super good performer um thank you enjoy your overclocking okay let me show you the bios settings that you need to do to enable raid zero so you need to go to system agent configuration and then go to vmd setup menu make sure that the vmd controller is enabled and in my case i am actually i don't need that's fine i don't need that i'm only using pci express storage here uh, for raid setup so you do that and you might have to save and exit and then come back to bios and then you you should be seeing the intel rapid storage technology option right at the bottom in advanced you go to that and obviously i've already got a volume for you you would necessarily you wouldn't see the volume uh, you would need to essentially go and create this volume and it's pretty straightforward you just basically select the drives there'll be a list of these two drives or you could actually connect i've done this with four drives too select the two drives create volume select base you know default stripe 64k or whatever it is and bob's your uncle okay uh, since we're in windows let me just quickly show you um just a just a brief test on on these ssds they are amazing um this is basically two drives in raid zero running at 9k or 9,000 megabytes a second read and write and sequential is <laughs> absolutely insane. So yeah, these Firecuda drives are awesome. So if you do need a, if you're potentially running a video editing setup and you need some scrubbing disks or something crazy fast, yeah, these are, I think, the, probably the fastest um, SSDs you can have on the market right now. And they really are amazing super super fast so there we go uh they're running this raid array as you can see we're talking about the seagate fire cuda 530s all right thank you very much all right so we've seen the results um pretty straightforward overclock very easy settings you should be able to replicate this obviously you will potentially have to play with voltages and frequencies because not every cpu is going to be the same also your cooling is going to be different all sorts of other variables are going to affect how you know the potential of your overclock but anyway that's a, this is a good guide rough guide but it should give you a good baseline to be able to reach a good overclock so uh, here is a quick look at the rig as well this is what i use 